Uh, I wanted to talk today about the how, the what, and the when of social noting. And um, this schema came about really from doing this facilitator training with you all and having to be kind of forced into a position that I've not been in uh, with respect to this practice, which is like, how do I support other people in learning how to, to most easily facilitate these techniques? Um, I've been facilitating them and practicing them for several years, but I haven't really ever had to ask that question in such a sustained way. So for me, this has really been a great opportunity to step back and to look at how uh, we're doing what we're doing here and what social noting is. And in, in doing that, I've sort of been looking at all the different techniques and the practices that we're doing here and even just the naming conventions around them. Like what is freestyle noting? What is there is noting? What's the difference between them? What are the commonalities? Um, is there any kind of schema or framework that we can deduce from all these things that have emerged really organically and naturally um, that helps describe a deeper pattern or structure to them? And, and so this uh, how, what, and when is really the, out, uh, the result of that contemplation. Um, and so let me start with the how of, of social noting. Um, in the first week together, we did a practice called There Is Noting. And this is a perfect example of modifying the how. Because instead of just doing straight noting, um, which is you know, the default uh, when we do noting practice, where we're just using a word or two or three or whatever to describe our experience, our sensory experience. With There Is Noting, we add the phrase There Is in front of the notes, in front of just the straight notes. And then we have this different way of noting, a different how to note. There is seeing, there is touching, there's thinking, so forth. Um, after I learned that technique from Kenneth Folk, uh, I got inspired by it and I thought, oh, well, maybe there's other ways to note. And I came up also with another technique called noting is like this. And this is another example of modifying the how of noting practice. Uh, in that practice, which we'll do together in a few weeks, um, you just use the note first, and then you add is like this to the end of the note. So it, it would look like this. Seeing is like this. Thinking is like this. Relaxing and confusion are like this. Not knowing is like this. And he, this is another practice that's meant to highlight something different uh, in doing noting. It actually modifies the, the very experience of the practice by adding is like this or by adding there is or by just doing straight notes. It, it actually changes the very nature of the practice. Um, so that's the how. And, 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 and there are probably many other ways that we could modify the how. I mean, um, I don't even know what they are. But, but I just know that, that there's a way to modify how we note. Uh, and then what, what we note. Um, we've, we've really explored this in a lot of depth already. Um, we started with the six senses. This is very clearly a what. You know, what are we noting with the six senses? Well, we're noting these six categories. And we're coming up with this sort of model inspired by the early Buddhist tradition. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, thinking. These are six senses. And we're noting them. So that's, that's one way to change the what. Um, we also have been exploring through the four categories, uh, different what's there. You know, we've got the body sensations, we've got charge, we've got mind states, we've got thoughts. All of these are different, um, different objects that we could notice, different things that we could pay attention to. And, and what's in common about all of these different what's is that we're using a sort of conceptual framework to kind of organize and help us understand you know, what is it that we're paying attention to in our experience? What sensory experiences are we noticing? And this gives us a kind of conceptual clarity and it helps us filter out and filter in different kinds of experiences when we change the what of our experience. There's binary noting, which we've yet to do, where you can just note one of two things. Um, when I first learned this from Kenneth Folk, he, he taught the binary of problem, no problem. So you could note one of those two. It's like at any given moment, there's either problem or no problem. Um, I also like noting selfing, no selfing, uh, thinking, no thinking, 
Um, and you can, you know, you can set up really any kind of binary of, of seemingly opposite experiences and just set yourself up to note the what of those two things. Um, after learning binary noting from Kenneth, I realized, well, of course, you could also just do unitary noting or just noting. You could just note one thing. Um, so one of my favorite practices is just noting, just sitting, where you can just note out loud, just sitting. Just sitting. Just sitting. And so forth. Um, so that's working with just a single experience but that's still changing the what of experience. We're still focusing in and honing in on, on, on a particular what. In this case, it's just one thing. But that is a modifying the what we're noting. Uh, and then with freestyle noting, which we're gonna do some more together today, um, really the way that freestyle noting can be defined is that we don't restrict the what. We don't have any preconceived categories of what we're noticing. There's no um, limitations on what you can notice. So that's a way really of defining freestyle noting. And then finally we have the when of noting. When do you note in this practice? Uh, and here there are really two options that I've been working with and teaching. Um, they're probably not the only two possible options, um, but they are two that I find are really consistently useful. One is uh, noting sequentially. You know, we note when it's our turn. And we just take turns, going in a kind of sequence. Um, the other option is to note spontaneously, to note when you feel moved to note. Um, and so this is another way of noting when we note, of altering the when. And then really, if you take these three and put them together, and you kind of define each of these parameters, when those three are all defined together, you have kind of basic noting instructions. And you can modify the how, you can modify the what, and you can modify the when. And you can make different combinations of what, how, and when, and come up with different types of practices that are basic and simple. Um, and then, you know, and we won't go into this much now, but if you combine simple practices together that have a clear what, how, and when, um, if you combine them either simultaneously, as in you're working with multiple practice options, as is done in the essence noting technique, um, which we'll um, potentially explore later. Um, or if you do them in sequence, uh, which I do with a practice uh, that I think of as the Dutch sequence, um, where you start with sequential there is noting, and then you drop the there is and just do straight uh, freestyle noting sequentially. Then you drop the sequence and you just do spontaneous freestyle noting. And the last part of that sequence, you drop the noting altogether and just sit. That's a sequence working through four different practices. Um, so there's an option here of just learning the basic simple parameters, which is really what this training is focused on. And then once you become kind of familiar with that and are able to do that, there's the possibility of being creative, even more creative and building up different kinds of combinations and sequences of practice for particular purposes. Uh, and I wanted to mention one um, kind of example of a um, of of creating or crafting a simple practice for a particular purpose because I think this is going to be something that as facilitators you'll you'll be considering and thinking about. It's like how do I bring this into what X? <laughs> how do I bring this into my work? How do I bring this into my community? How do I bring this into my you know whatever my activism? It whatever it is that you're learning, figuring out how to apply to social noting. We have to kind of ask that question. And so at the very beginning of all of our sessions, we do the state check-in, you know, and the instructions I give are, you know, uh, saying there is, and then a, with a word or two, describe your current state of mind coming into the session. So if we were to look at the, the how, the what, and the when, um, then we'd say, well, uh, in terms of the how, in terms of the how, there's the there is. We're using there is, and then what are we noticing? Well, we're noticing mind states, the third category. Um, and then when, well, we're doing it spontaneously. So whenever you feel moved, you can note. And that describes the basic state check-in. Um, in fact, um, you know, I, I have a very simple um, kind of graph that I've been using for myself, a sort of shorthand notation that I'll show you here. 
that sort of helps me um, kind of identify the which elements of the practice I'm teaching. And then beneath that, I have, you know, the size of the group and then the duration of the practice. And I can use that sort of simple kind of box to help me remember what it is that I'm teaching and uh, how long we're going and, you know, what group sizes will be. That way I don't have to sort of decipher all this kind of weird, uh, weird marks that I've been doing. And uh, I find that helpful.